From the UBS Broadcast Center at Union University, this is Jackson 24-7. Hello again, everyone. I'm Steve Beverly with another special edition of Jackson 24-7. Sue Shelton White. That's a name that almost certainly doesn't ring a bell if you're a millennial. But for students of American and Tennessee history, she was a game changer. Moreover, she was from Jackson. She was born in Henderson in 1887. As an adult, she moved to Jackson and became one of the few women attorneys in America. She was known as the Lady Warrior, and her tireless efforts were instrumental in giving women the right to vote. A number of donors, the City of Jackson, and the Sue Shelton White Memorial Committee commissioned a sculpture of Miss White. A ceremony on a warm spring day at City Hall was not just for an unveiling of the bust created by well-known Jackson artist Wanda Stanfield. It was also a journey into Jackson and Tennessee history as a woman stood firm for her sisters to have the right to vote. Let's go to the front court of City Hall as the colors are presented and as music professor and vocal teacher Esther Gray Lemus leads the Pledge of Allegiance and sings our national anthem. Thank you, Esther. Thank you, gentlemen. Please help me welcome Jackie Hillman, president of the Sue Shelton White Memorial Committee. She's also a member of the Women's Suffrage Monument Board and is co-founder co of the Tennessee Women's Suffrage Heritage Trail. Please welcome Jackie. Welcome to a great moment that the members of the Sue Shelton White Committee have been waiting for for a year. The dedication of the beautiful bronze sculpture by Wanda Stanfo, our own local artisan. As president of the committee, I can tell you that we are here today to celebrate Sue Shelton White on what would have been her birthday in 1887 because of the efforts of my committee. They worked so hard. Our belief in this project has guided us as we celebrate Sue White, the Lady Warrior, as she was known in Washington, D.C. I ask our committee members who are present to stand and be recognized. Herbert Alexander G. Sr., Glenda Baker, Paula Casey, Joe Mathern, 
Doris Medlin, Lynn Menendez, Mary Jo Middlebrooks, Linda Rizzuto, and Wanda Stanfield. The entire group is listed on the plaque at my right. Thank you for all that you have done. I appreciate you every minute of every day. From the moment we saw her concept, we believed in it. A classical rendering of a woman who exuded a quiet calm with steel persistence because she never gave up. Who was Sue Shelton White? Originally from Chester County, Sue White, her widowed mother and her sister gave reading and writing and piano lessons in exchange for food. Times were tough. She knew what it was like to be poor. Orphaned as a teenager, she went to college for two years and began working at age 17. She was a brilliant young woman, but in every job she took, they said, oh, you don't need to learn more, you don't need to know this because you're a woman, be happy. Of course, she ignored them all, and by 1926, she was an attorney. But she never forgot how her mother struggled to feed, clothe, and educate her children as a widow. And so many of the actions that she took throughout her life were because of this, to help other women. She became an impassioned supporter of women's rights early on and started in 1911, 1912, 1913, creating the Tennessee Equal Suffrage Leagues across Tennessee. There were 75 and 25 were in West Tennessee. Then in 1919, she went with a group of women to Washington, D.C., protested in front of the White House, and uh, she got in some trouble. She got thrown in jail for five nights. But that didn't stop her either. Then she went across the country speaking about it and built this groundswell of support. Back then, that was social media. <laughs> in 1920, the focus of the 19th Amendment swung to Tennessee. We were the pivotal state. It was make it or break it. But I will leave that story to Harvard Alexander, our Madison County historian, and to Paula Casey, publisher of The Perfect 36, to share that with you. But to simplify, because of Sue Shelton White of Chester County and Jackson, Tennessee, women in America today have the right to vote. Because of Sue Shelton White, who went to Washington, D.C. as a friend of Eleanor Roosevelt, the Social Security Act was written under her guidance and she helped implement it. If you are getting any Social Security or planning on it, it's because of Sue Shelton White of Jackson, Tennessee. And because of you, our donors and supporters of historic preservation, today we remember this remarkable, elegant, petite woman who was known as the Lady Warrior. Thank you especially to the city of Jackson for supporting this monument as our suffrage society donor, and to Tammy Buchanan, the mayor's cultural liaison who has been an integral part of planning this. This monument is part of the Tennessee Woman's Suffrage Heritage Trail, which is celebrating the centennial of the 19th Amendment in 2020. There will be tourists from across America coming to Jackson, Tennessee to celebrate our history. And to the Lawyers Association for Women of Jackson and to Jackson Area Business and Professional Women, our Sue Shelton White Society donors, you gave us the seed money to start this project and you gave us hope when we began with such gracious donations. To each of our individual donors and our DAR organizations, and by the way, Sue Shelton White was a 20-year member of the DAR. Our Sue Shelton White patrons, you have fulfilled this project and made it a success. Most of our donors are recognized on the temporary plaque behind me at my right. It will be completed in bronze in the fall. We have some pledge donations that are still arriving each day. We want to thank Chandelier Cafe for hosting the donor's reception today at the Neely House. 
and we appreciate the Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 995 for letting us honor her with the presentation of the flags. To the Luger Foundry of Eads, Larry Luger and his son Jordan, you are a blessing. You molded Miss Sue in bronze and you brought her safely home as we stood here and worried that something might happen as she was lifted into place, but it was perfect. To our young girls here today, you are our future leaders. We hope you vote in every election. Don't ever say you're too busy, you can't go. We hope that you work to improve life for women and children wherever you are years from now. Thank you also to our Girl Scouts for helping us today. To each one of you here, thank you for making this day a success. And we appreciate our local media for being here to record this for posterity. It's taken us a long time to honor Sue Shelton White, and we are grateful that we have this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie, for your leadership. Now please help me welcome Madison County Mayor Jimmy Harris, a staunch supporter of preserving our history for our future generations. Make him feel welcome. Good afternoon. Sue Shelton White, lawyer, suffragist, and government official. That's the way she's described in the encyclopedia. Miss Sue, as she was known to those who knew her well, she was a fighter to say the least. She became famous for fighting for a right for all women. But more importantly, I think, she fought for what is right and what is fair and for equality for all women. But she didn't stop there. She wrote and promoted legislation that benefited women. She was responsible for drafting Tennessee's first Married Women's Property Act, a Mother's Pension Act, and an old age pension provision. All of these eventually became law in the state of Tennessee. Because of Sue Shelton White, my wife, my two daughters, my granddaughter, has the same rights as my son, my grandson, and me. If not for her efforts and many, many thousand other women for so many years, that would not be the case today. Sue Shelton White is a member of a group of people who, through their efforts, their sacrifice, their dedication throughout our nation's history, helped make our country what it is today. I think it's very fitting that we commemorate her contributions to our country for the dedication of this sculpture today, and I appreciate you being here to celebrate. Thank you. Mayor Jerry Gist was unable to be here today with us. Representing the city of Jackson is Madison County historian Harvard Alexander Sr. Mr. Alexander is a member of the Tennessee State uh, Museum Board and noted author of regional history. Please welcome Mr. Harvard. When I think about Sue Shelton White, she's always running while others are still she was passionate about her beliefs while others were silent. She was steadfast in her principles while others were not. On, on January of 1820, 1920, uh, when the Women's Suffragists Act was passed at last national the state legislature, the ladies were in the balcony. And when they passed, they threw their yellow corsages down as a measure of appreciation. If that had not passed that day, 
I wonder what Sue Shelton White would have been throwing down. <laughs> I expect she had a supply of bricks up there. <laughs> Sue Shelton White was born in Henderson in 1919, daughter of a Methodist minister, and times were tough for that family. Her father died when she was nine. Her mother died four years later, and she was an orphan. Her aunt raised her. She went to what is now Fred Hardwin College for a year and then went to West Tennessee Business College. She then took her first job about two blocks east of here in Southern Engine and Boiler Works, which was the biggest business manufacturer in Jackson. She was a stenographer and a clerk. A year after she went to work there, they began to make the Marathon automobiles, which she was already gone because she had realized there was no opportunity for her to move up with that company. She followed her sister's footsteps, became a court reporter, uh, and then by 1925, she was very active in the women's suffrage movement, and she was the editor of the suffragists. Her day, her great day of notoriety came when, on February the 19th, 1919, when the silent sentinels of the women's suffrage movement were walking outside of the White House. And one of them, of course it was Miss Sue, took a picture of the president and put it in a fire and watched it turn to ashes. Almost immediately that group of ladies was offered a free night's lodging, courtesy of the president, in jail. <laughs> she spent five days in jail, and then a group of ladies toured the United States. They were uh, asylum sentinels, and they wore costumes of the uniforms that they had had on when they were in jail. She became secretary, more than that, an office manager for Senator McKellar in Washington. And then she came back home when that job was through and became the first lady attorney ever to practice in Madison County. Her office straight across the street up on the third floor there. And she was a partner in the firm of Anderson and White with Judge Hugh Anderson. You've already heard the things that she was involved with because of her, the things that we have now, Social Security especially is, is what I think about. She did not live very long. She died in my mind as a young lady. This past January when we ushered in a new president. The day after that election, the day after uh, the inauguration, women marched all across Washington. And once again, women marched in Washington and across the land to patrol and to pressure for the dignity and, and equality of women Sue White has been dead for nearly 75 years, but her legacy lives on and the women continue to march. Thank you. If you want to know the history of how women earned the right to vote in America and the major role Tennessee and Jackson attorney Sue Shelton White played in it, Paula Casey can tell you everything you need to know. She's a researcher, historian, and author on women's suffrage. 
Let's return to City Hall for her perspective on the role of Sue Shelton White as a true pioneer for women. The story of the 19th Amendment's passage is one of the greatest in American history, particularly for this great experiment we call democracy. The women and men who struggled off and on for 72 years to include women in the United States Constitution achieved their goal through a peaceful revolution without firing a single shot or shedding one drop of human blood. But ratification was obtained only after hundreds of campaigns in state after state as the suffragists met with defeat. Few know that it was the women seeking the vote who first picketed the White House. They faced hunger, hunger strikes, jail, and forced feedings. Years of organizing, ridicule, and great disappointment after the Civil War when the 14th and 15th Amendments excluded women from voting. Yet they persevered until victory was achieved in Nashville on August 18, 1920. Tennessee then became known as the Perfect 36, the last state that could possibly ratify the 19th Amendment and make it law. No other state was even close. When the 19th Amendment finally passed Congress on June 4, 1919, the battleground shifted to the states where 36 of the then 48 states were needed for ratification. Wisconsin became the first state to ratify on June 10, 1919, and a string of victories followed. By the summer of 1920, 35 states had ratified, 8 had rejected it, and with no other state even close to ratifying, the governor called a special session in Tennessee. The pressure had mounted for him to do so, and one of the people who sent Governor A.H. Roberts a letter was Sue Shelton White, urging a special session. She had the distinction of being the only woman in Tennessee jailed fighting for suffrage. And I want you to notice when we unveil this marvelous statue that there is a jailhouse store pin, which is what the women who actually served time in jail fighting for suffrage wore proudly. And many of us have our jailhouse store pins today. Carrie Chapman Catt was a premier suffrage strategist who came to the Hermitage Hotel expecting to stay for a few days. And she wrote after she'd been here for a while, I've been here a month, it is hot, muggy, nasty, and this last battle, desperate. Even if we win, we who have been here will never remember it with anything but a shudder. The Tennessee Senate passed 25 to four and then it went to the House. And actually, victory was very uncertain. There were three heroes, in my opinion, in the House of Representatives. Representative Joe Hanover of Memphis, a Polish immigrant who ran for the General Assembly to cast his vote for the 19th Amendment, kept those pro-suffrage votes together, despite the onslaught of various interests. Banks Turner of Yorkville was the one who kept the amendment alive when there was some serious parliamentary maneuvering to derail it and table the motion. And then, of course, everyone's heard the story about Harry Byrne, who got the letter from his mother. And so we come back to honoring Sue Shelton White, who was such an important suffragist. She is really the face for Tennessee of everything important that happened with her Washington experience, her Tennessee experience, and Miss Sue, as she was affectionately known, was, had great regard all across the aisles. She really was such an important suffragist. So today, we honor her with public art because public art is forever. I also have two jailhouse door pins that I would like to present to Wanda Stanfall and Jackie Hillman. so cool, everybody should get a jailhouse door pen. Thank you for your support. Now let's hear from the Lady Warrior in her own words as portrayed by the incomparable Dana Poteet. Good afternoon, and thank you for having the fortitude to gather publicly today. We must remember the past and hold fast to the present and build for the future. If you stand in your accepted place today, it was because some woman had to fight yesterday. 
We should be ashamed to stand on ground won by women in the past without making an effort to honor them by winning a higher and wider field for the future. It is a debt we owe. Thank you. And now, as an interested crowd looks on, the woman who created the monument to Sue Shelton White, Wanda Stanfield. To portray Sue Shelton White in the way that I thought she would want to be portrayed, it was very important that this sculpture be Tennessee made as much as possible. From the materials that my husband used to build the armature, to the clay, from the Old Hickory Clay Com Company in Gleason, to Luger Foundry in East Tennessee, and all the other Tennessee businesses that we used to create this sculpture, we can say that the Sue Shelton White sculpture is not only Tennessee made, but she is West Tennessee made. <laughs> to honor her, we placed her in Jackson, the launch pad to her, her successful career and to her future to serving the American people. And just like Sue, this sculptor is firmly grounded in Jackson, but as you see, it's facing east to the place where she knew she had to go to change America. She's portrayed in her early 30s and reflects every woman who stood up for the equal right to vote and for democracy. She is dignified, courageous, and timeless. But as you heard earlier, uh, she could misbehave, so on her simple dress, as mentioned, there is a pin resembling the jailhouse door that was given to her. And she had to misbehave from time to time to get her point across. This sculpture stands in her honor, but it also serves as a reminder to all of us to cherish and protect our right to vote. And by exercising that right to vote, we are honoring the legacy of these brave women and especially to our very own Sue Shelton White, our West Tennessee daughter. The weather was perfect, the anticipation was intense. The unveiling was at hand of a statue for our community to permanently remember the role Jackson's own Sue Shelton White played in the campaign for women to have the right to vote. Madison County historian Harvard Alexander and a group of Girl Scouts, our Sue Shelton Whites of the future, do the honors. <laughs> Every community has its game changers, but in our era of millennials who often only care about what's happening now and scoff at any interest in history, it's easy for those who made a difference as pioneers to be forgotten, to be consigned to books with dusty covers, and younger people who hear a name from the past and ask, who's that? But as an entertainer of the past, George Kirby once said, somebody has to be first so someone else can be next. Indeed, Sue Shelton White kicked in a lot of front doors for women more than 100 years ago, so women of today can walk through those same doors. Take your children and grandchildren to City Hall someday and show them the place where the face of Sue Shelton White is on permanent display. Tell the girls in your family a simple story. What this woman did a century ago made it possible for you to step into a voting booth on election day and cast your ballot. She indeed was a true pioneer for women in Jackson, Tennessee, and America. That's Jackson 24-7. I'm Steve Everly saying so long from the great hub city of West Tennessee. <laughs>